Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to Travel Tour Taste. This is a first for us. We've travelled up to Wiltshire this morning. Um, it's just on the other side of Salisbury, Salisbury Plain. We're going to visit the English heritage site, Stonehenge. Like I said, we've never been before. This is the main car park area. And just over there, I think you've got the visitor centre, but I'll show you a little bit more of that a little bit later on. So um, hopefully from that point, because we're about two miles away from the stones, um, they, there's a mini bus or a coach or something like that. Like I said, I don't really know. Um, and we're going to jump on that and then that takes you up to Stonehenge itself. So it's going to be a really exciting video. A lot of history. Hopefully I'll get most of it right. Try and remember as much as I possibly can. And we'll just take it from there. See you soon. But we've just got our tickets to go into Stonehenge and it's not just about Stonehenge itself. Just to my right hand side you've got a fantastic ex exhibition centre which we'll take you inside of. And um, you could, there's so much information in there, it's absolutely unbelievable. Just to the left hand side of me you've got a beautiful cafe stroke restaurant where you can get something to eat and drink now Stonehenge itself from the exhibition center from where you pick up your tickets is about a 30 minute walk or you can get a free bus which we're gonna do um, which takes you right up to the henge itself so and um, just behind me there you can see they've got a gift shop we'll check that out in a little while and of course outside you've got an old style village from thousands of years ago which we're going to have a little wonder around that as well so we're going to pop inside the exhibition center and give you a little taster of what there is in there but do come down because it's not just about the stones themselves you've got so much to see so much to do with schools here um, there's 3d images so it's like you're in the center of the stones themselves and you come through a VIP package as well and there's tons of very knowledgeable people around that are here to answer any questions for you. So this is the first part of the exhibition centre and as you can see it's very very quiet today which is great so I recommend if you want to get the most from this experience to probably come midweek so there'll probably be a couple of children's school parties and things like that but it will be a lot quieter um, during the week than obviously bank holidays and during the weekends. Just here you can see how far back it dates we're talking around six to eight thousand years ago we've got a timeline there which obviously will explain a lot more and you'll see a lot more of but when you put Stonehenge into comparison with things like Machu Picchu and the Colosseums in ancient Greece and Athens and um, yeah Easter Island statues on Easter Island you know Stonehenge was around a lot a lot earlier than those places were and we think of places like Machu Picchu and the stone monuments on Easter Island as being you know some of the oldest on earth well these didn't come till a fair few thousand years after Stonehenge so it just does give you a real good idea of how old that this whole and it's not just Stonehenge itself we've got Woodhenge there's lots of burial mounds around that were been here for thousands and thousands of years themselves so there's plenty to see up here in Wiltshire. So this first um, model that you see here very very early indeed we're talking around 3000 to 3500 BC so around uh, five to six thousand years old now first up you have these mounds where it was dug out and you can see all the way around the henge itself now the word henge stonehenge stone was actually known as stan in old english and henge for the lentils that you know when they were leaning as in hinge henge meaning hinge but also hinge was also a word that was known as um, the gallows to hang um, but we'll come to that a little bit later so as you can see all these ditches were built 
um, and dug out around and inside all these little stones here that you see they're named the Aubrey stones now they do think that they were grave markers possibly because underneath each of those stones there were remains of bodies that were found um, splinters of bones an equal amount around 63 um, bodies were exhumed at that point and through certain sort of dialysis and things like that over the years they reckon that there was an equal amount of men and women and also a few children's remains in there as well now the reason why they're called Aubrey Hole Pillars or they were the Aubrey Hole Stones is because of John Horb Aubrey who was of course um, a 17th century antiquarian so and then these blue stones were not originally from this area they do believe that they were brought from Pembrokeshire up in Wales now when the stones are polished they do give off a blue glint or because of the age of them now we will see a little bit later on but they don't look blue anymore but sometimes when it rains there's particles that actually do appear to be of of you know the blue color itself now later on we're probably talking about 500 or so years later the sarsen circle was erected which you can see here um all the way around the inside of the 56 blue stones which we talked about in that previous shot um they also placed some of the blue stones inside so originally they weren't sure whether they were taken from the outside and put on the inside so then the large sarsen stones that you see around um, would be able to protect them now these other big ones that you see with the lintels on top were actually known as triathlons triathlons um, stones and on the outside we have station zone stones these were also I do believe blue stones as well so you had your north and you had your south but the slaughter stone we'll see it a little bit later has now fallen um, down so it's only the heel stand that that still stands which is up here on the outside so the two slaughter stones and it's believed that when the sun rises it, this stone would have cast the shadow right the way through the center of the sarsen circle which these ones are here and again yep blue stones so on this third model it actually shows the avenue now these two avenues were built um, as like a procession to the monument itself and it led all the way back to the river Avon now the river Avon um, is about 220 miles long now on the summer solstice you would see the sun rise here you've got the access line and it goes in between the two slaughter stones and it would go right the way up into the center so it would cast a shadow on this fourth model this is how you would see stonehenge today which is how you'll see it a little bit later on when we mosey on up there and check it out i cannot wait you, you're looking at a lot of decay over 4,000 plus years but that is how it stands that is how it looks today and you can of course get that vip so you can stand in the middle of it so i would really recommend checking that one out inside here you can see at the top there are some antlers now antlers were used to carve the horse shape around it that we've shown you on the video as well around the outside of the stones and these other bones from the animals were probably placed into that henge bit into those ditches as offerings that's what we think anyway And here we see the blue stone, which we showed you a little bit of earlier. There will be a picture of some blue stones up there as well. And also the sarsen stone. So these are the ones that the stones themselves are made out of. And these things here, these stones, these rocks, were used as hammers to actually chisel it all out and to shape the blue stones and the sarsen stones. Unbelievable when you think about it. Now we know that obviously, you know, it was used as a cremation site and here you can see some bone fragments from around 3,000 years ago 
Um, they're not sure whether it was male or female, but those were placed inside the Aubrey holes that we've mentioned quite a lot, which the blue stones were put on top of. So this behind me is a replica of Stone 60 as it is known. It's an exact replica, it weighs about 28 tons and Stone 60 is still upright on the inner circle of the horseshoe but it just gives you an idea of, you know, how these things were moved as well and in a little experiment that they did it took a hundred men and women people to move this stone on these wooden um, lints as you like and what they did they put animal fat on it to actually help get the movement going and to keep it going and this is really interesting because at the top of this one like I said it is an exact replica of stone 60 you can see it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle isn't it where you've got the raised and on the on the lentil it would have had it dug out so then they could sit exactly on top of each other like I said a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle and there behind me you can see the enormity of the uh, the exhibition center so there's tons to see and do in there and it's not too far only a stone's throw away from the car park which is up behind me there just over here so that's one of the sarsen stones now those ones are the main ones in Stonehenge as we know and these two here are replicas of the blue stones, the smaller ones which were on the outside in that 56 position, possibly grave markers as they found all those cremated remains underneath them and then they were moved to the inside as well. Well this is pretty exciting, we are inside a Neatholic little village inside one of their living spaces, a little hut if you like, um, as you can see in the centre here, this big circle, this is where they would have had their fire and the fire would have been going continuously, you've got a bed to my left hand side and you've got a little one to the right hand side and placed right up at the back you can see some some old pottery pieces for their cooking and things like that and wooden shelving so things haven't changed that much as you can see they're just made from sticks and reeds because the river Avon is only about three to four miles away so it's amazing really and it is in these little villages this was about four miles away so this is a reconstruction down at Durrington um, this is a reconstruction of the part of the village and they do believe we've got no pure evidence of it that maybe these are where the workers lived that actually helped to build um, Stonehenge itself This is the outside of the uh, reconstruction of a Neatholic village. So we're just going to make our way up to Stonehenge now itself. Now you can either walk like I said, which is about 20 minutes and there's a singular path and along the way hopefully we'll get to see some burial grounds as well from the Bronze Age and I'll tell you a little bit more about those. Or you can get the bus. I think we're going to walk there and then get the bus back.